making this consistency, the liquid and the solid separation would be very, very difficult because it is completely dependent on the density of the sludge, what it comes in and to what extent it is diluted there. The, 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 as you know that uh, in, whenever we put for the settling, it takes certain time to come down. So, what is the good percentage for you to put that into the centrifuge? I don't have any information. We always can take the, the, the manual or maybe the, the technical specification book of the, the supplier. They can tell you with what good percentage uh, it treats better or not. Key thing okay. here is uh, how to reduce the volume to be handled by your centrifuge. So if you are having that step initially, if it is very very dilute, yeah, you you'll do that. So because uh, that is a more efficient way of separating the water and uh, solids rather than sending the whole thing through a centrifuge. So it, I think yes, in terms of operation, the manual would say uh, what kind of uh, dosage of uh, polymer would would be ideal to produce what kind of uh, solids. Uh, separation. But the principle here is that the purpose of solid liquid separation is to reduce the volume. Yes. So if you can do it in a much more simpler way with the settling uh, tank up front, you do it. And then just send the settled portion into the solid cells. Okay. Thank you. And if there are no more questions, we'll move on to Good afternoon. Uh, here I have shown that FSM project component 4. To address all the components of value, FSM value chain, we have four com five components in our project. So I will discuss only on component 4. That is regarding improved treatment, disposal and reuse of fecal class. Before going into details, I can show here that there are some logos. This is Khulna City Corporation, this is Kushtia Poroshova, this is Chinaida Poroshova, this one is Khulna University, this one is Khulna University of Engineering and Technology, this is Water Rent, and this one is Khulna Water Supply and Sewerage Authority. So from day one, even the, uh, before beginning of the project, we the partners are uh, starting together. Because they are the local initiative, uh, local institutes and they, uh, they are the actual authority of that city, only not that city corporation or municipality. <coughs> Funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and behind uh, 
the field is here and with the SNB, Netherlands Development Organization is implementing this project. So uh, I want to discuss only this component for you know, Bangladesh, in terms of sanitation coverage, uh, there is tremendous very good result because it has been uh, reduced to only 1% uh, in 2015 from to 42% in 2003. This is open defecation. Still, we have 1% to address. Uh, now, uh, actually, we have to do ODA plus or ODA plus plus. This is the project area. Actually, we are working on the <coughs> southwest area of Bangladesh. Uh, one city corporation and another two small municipalities. In Khulna City Corporation, uh, the area wise, Khulna City Corporation and Kushtia municipalities are most same. 45 and 42 square kilometer, but population wise, Puna City Corporation, there are 15 lakh people. In Kushtia, there are about 4 lakh, and Jinaida is only uh, 150,000. Uh, we got different types of toilets, mainly pit toilet and septic tank. In Bangladesh, regarding uh, FSM, uh, we have two things. One is BNBC, that's Bangladesh National Building Code, fire standards of septic tank and emptying frequency, etc. Uh, described there. <coughs> Another one is uh, we have national strategy for water supply and sanitation. It just started in 2014, and under this, we have established uh, one strategy that, uh, that is exclusively for fecal sludge management, that is strategy 5. And another one is institutional and regulatory framework that is in still drug form. Uh, now we go for uh, the design of fecal treatment plant for these three cities. So for design of this treatment plant, we engaged for the University of Engineering Technology, that is Bangladesh, and another one is Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand. Uh, for design of this treatment plant, uh, they had to analyze some things regarding the demographic data, household economic activity and poverty data, access to services that is water, sanitation, electricity, etc. Data on other types of premises like schools, government or public places, government plans and strategies to address issues related to sanitation, existing government regulations and relevant maps also. Uh, then uh, these uh, two universities actually they have estimated this fecal sludge volume generated per year in three towns in Khulna. Uh, it is done in two methods. One is just theoretical, another is through field survey data. In Khulna, we have found near about uh, seven lakh meter cube per year. In Kushtia, it was uh, near about one lakh meter cube per year. Jinaida, it was around 60,000. 60, in Kushtia, Hawaii, uh, ESDB uh, representative, he told that again, uh, they have to estimate the uh, volume of fecal cell generation because this uh, municipality uh, has recently extended two times. So their population has also increased. So that's why it needs to again to estimate the fecal cell volume. <coughs> Uh, before actually uh, design of this treatment plant, uh, we had to do some uh, fecal sludge analysis, some parameters. That, uh, but in uh, our locality, even in Bangladesh, we don't have uh, some uh, this type of facilities. That's why we have a local university that is Kuruma University of Engineering Technology. They have an uh, uh, environmental lab, engineering lab but they don't have any this type of facilities for fecal cell analysis. That's why uh, we engaged AIT for this training, uh, for laboratory training on fecal cell analysis. And uh, after that, uh, we had tested some parameters, like 16 parameters, uh, like BOD, uh, total solids, this 
and uh, we found that BOD is 800 to 1600 milligram per liter. Total solids, it is in three towns, uh, three to six percent only. After that, Khulna City Corporation, they allocated one land, but that is the land fee. Because you know the crisis of land in Bangladesh is the uh, there are various crises. That's why they have allocated a land fee. And uh, you see that up, uh, this land fee that has a uh, trends here. Earlier I told that before uh, starting this project, we have a exposure visit in uh, IWK Malaysia. And after coming back from Malaysia. The city corporation engineer, uh, with the help of SNB, they train some, uh, they take some trenches. Then uh, AIT and uh, that engineering university both they review some treatment plant technology and regarding considering the all things on the basis of these three municipalities, and they came up with uh, there are lots of. Uh, treatment technology, but on the uh, analysis of the all the data, they have come only these four types technology that is planted, unplanted, dry bed, uh, and constructed wetlands. After that, uh, we had discussion with uh, uh, city corporation because actually they are the Chalona, that uh, and uh, we had three options, three menu there. One is constructed wetland plus constructed wetland, that is for solid plus liquid. Then another one is drying bed for solid, then liquid for uh, constructed and liquid. Then another was anaerobic digester and drying bed. All the uh, advantages, disadvantages and, and technical details were discussed with the city corporation engineers and with the analysis of these uh, advantages and disadvantages, actually the uh, came up with the first option that is constructed wetland plus constructed wetland because this is very much uh, uh, necessary because uh, we SNP are with the uh, development partners will not stay there so that's the, uh, the from beginning if we if they chose themselves then they will take care of this and finally the city council accepted uh, that first option Finally, it was uh, designed details like this. This was three, uh, 3D view, and then later is the actually under the implementation. Uh, earlier, I told that as it is the uh, landfill, so there was challenge for construction of uh, heavy infrastructure like uh, cement concrete or uh, reinforced cement concrete. That's why then these two engineering universities, they came up with some uh, technologies to resist the landfill. Uh, then they used this geotextile and high density polyethylene. But the challenge was in Bangladesh to get the that HDP sheet. And after that, uh, one plastic company, they came uh, that they can produce the HDP sheet but the challenge was to uh, join the ships each other. However, finally they got the welding machine from China and now we are under construction of this Kuna City Corporation. Uh, this was the uh, fetal treatment plant of Sinaida municipality. It was interesting because this was uh, constructed in 2012 by the government agency of Bangladesh. Just they had money and they constructed one and they gave this to principal without telling, without any training or without training. Then it was, this was just a sample. Uh, then we, uh, we, start, we started working in this municipality and then uh, we upgraded this. Just recently we have completed this construction. And earlier was that was only one unit, that was only for fecal slash treatment, a solid unit. But after that, we have made another uh, unit for percolate treatment also. In, uh, we have another uh, municipality, that is Kushtia municipality. Uh, they have a very little drying bed, 
and they are producing compost. But nowadays, their uh, demand of emptying is very much uh, increasing. That's why they need another one. Uh, that's why, uh, then we have uh, contracted with uh, USTP. Then now USTP is working on that. First one, they will improve this existing one, and then later on they will come up with a new one. Uh, this is some operation uh, method, the feeding option, there are a lot of options, just one example here. Uh, then uh, we, we have not yet, uh, we cannot tell this, you can use this, until you have the technical data with you. That's why we have some research, action research on reuse of this co-compost as one of our municipalities producing this co-compost. And we have come uh, with a contract with the government agency, actually, uh, whose research will, uh, will be accepted by the central government. That's why the Bangladesh Agricultural Research Institute, they are actually doing this with support of us. This is use of agriculture uh, in agriculture. And another action research on use of uh, fecal silage on aquaculture. And that is being done by uh, one department of Pune University. Department. Uh, finally, uh, we are telling this, actually this is short term options. If we, uh, this is good, very good result, then we have to uh, come up with some long term investment, long term option. In Khulna City Corporation, there is one another agency, Khulna Water Supply and Soares Authority. They have done a master plan for Soares Network, but in their master plan, if they implement 100%, but still 20% will not be under coverage. And that must be under uh, addressed by FSM, another site citation. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for speaking to the time limit of Question, comment? Yes. I just want to understand uh, this vehicle's uh, capacity calculation, the vertical one and uh, field survey, how, what was the methodology behind it, how did you calculate uh, the capacity or the generation? Uh, Simply I can tell that uh, the theoretical on the basis of only population, that one population, uh, how much the slash can be produced per day. That's the main thing. And uh, uh, practical, we have a baseline survey and we have found how many septic tanks, how many pits are there and what are the volumes at that septic tank. With this data, we have calculated the... Uh, so, theoretical per day calculation multiplied by uh, population is uh, the total city generation, that is how you yeah. Uh, the in storage, the, uh, moisture loss, everything. Just you know, in, in theoretically, just there are, uh, even uh, just couple of weeks ago, one professor came Bangladesh, from Bangladesh University of Internet Technology. Even he is telling that this method actually it is not even uh, very much right. So, uh, if I cannot tell that this is the very much good method and it is actually the estimated. You want to know how much they assume the company? Per capita, what is that? Actually, when we design the septic tank, you know there is a value of C. So, the C value, if you empty your septic tank before two years, then the C value is, uh, if I am not wrong, it is 0.5. And if you empty after uh, two years, then the C value is coming 0.4, like this. Okay. Are there any other? I think, and this large volume calculation of uh, push tier, push tier, that is not coinciding with our calculation. Perhaps uh, we need to revise it. Yeah, because what he's saying, that is because the area has increased. 
more popular? Not with the Kulna, but I am talking about the Kustia. Yeah? Uh, I am telling Kustia. Yeah. Yeah. Kustia, that's, uh, you saw this data, and uh, what we calculated is nearly four times more. Yeah? And that's, that needs to be verified, it's still in the verification process. Yeah? Uh, when you submit your report to us, then yeah. definitely we will do our comments. <laughs> Depend on. <that. laughs> I just wanted to ask, how are these different options decided? And in Bangladesh context, how long does it take from the decision to implementation and construction? <laughs> Actually, uh, actually uh, we had uh, told that uh, both the university that if we have many options in our menu, then the concerned authority can take this decision. And the concerned authority, they have the technical units also, they have the engineers. And uh, just uh, we have many options with this advantages, disadvantages, theoretical. And with this theoretically and with the demographic, the demographic data and, and another data like rainfall and the uh, water table of this area, this type of data actually analyzed. And then uh, the, both the university came up with only three options only for Kulna city. Then, uh, they sit with the technical department of that city and they they have came up, come up with only that technical analysis uh, not in details but they like advantages and disadvantages and what will be the operational maintenance and finally actually the interesting thing the constructed wetland actually here is very uh, is very uh, less needed of operational maintenance that's why actually the city authority they told we are very much new in this field. We cannot actually handle very sophisticated or uh, any other thing. And right now we don't uh, use to uh, use the fecal silas reuse. So just we have to ensure that um, our fecal silas is going is not going to drains or rivers. At least we have to do a some something that all the fecal silas is going to somewhere. Uh, certain place. Was the construction funded by the foundation? foundation? Yes. The, this, this, this project is totally funded by uh, Gil and Melvin. So that's why the decision making was easier. <laughs> <laughs> they had to pay the money would have been longer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You had it. So my question is uh, related with the testing. Uh, the initiatives were uh, testing the yes. So, uh, what would be a suggestion if somebody you know, wants to start from scratch? Uh, so, in your case, you had that institution that supported. Yeah. So, in, uh, what would be a suggestion for anybody? What is the minimum infrastructure? What would be the cost that one should uh, uh, budget if uh, you know this monitoring and testing is to be uh, accounted for? Good, very good question. Uh, in our uh, this treatment. Uh, we have a contract with these two universities. They will do performance monitoring after construction. Of this. But before uh, performance monitoring, they have to establish the uh, lab with the equipment. But unfortunately, they had uh, very few equipments. And the, another thing very interesting that yet not the protocol for fecal silas analysis is not established. Uh, we are doing this uh, with the protocol of wastewater. Okay. So, what, what is the budget? Oh, uh, and uh, and we we are actually uh, established for the improvement of this uh, environmental engineering lab of that university. And uh, if an AIT has, they have recommendation they a very big list. Then we told them. From the beginning, we cannot actually establish the full. At least some biological and some these total solid parts, we can do test. Then uh, for this uh, this testing, they have come up, come up with uh, some seven equipments, and it cost was uh, 25 lakh taka. 
but actually CBD can give you better from Indian condition yeah. because you have a running lab at Devana. So what will it cost? Dora, you had a... Uh, what was not really a question, but uh, I was uh, quite uh, taken in by one of the statements made that even though you plan for sewerage for the city, you expect that 20% will still continue to use... Uh, not, not expected. It is, it is the reported... Reported. Part, uh, part, part. <laughs> right, okay. So I think that's a very valid point with... Uh, we will find in most cities that you will rarely find a city where you can actually centralize and sewer everything. Uh, in Malaysia, we have only one place which is like that, which is Putrajaya. And that is a planned city. So when you plan a city on green fields starting from scratch, you can do that. But even in Kuala Lumpur, you'll find that it's about 90% disconnected. And 10% will continue to use septic tanks for the foreseeable future, which will be the proportion of mixed kind of systems that you can expect in most cities. Some cities will have higher and some cities will have less. So even if the city has got to have a pipe sewerage coming, you will still have the FSM issue to be tackled. Yeah, earlier that Rajesh already cited that in Bangladesh only in Dhaka there are uh, near, uh, more or less 20% is coverage. So you think whatever another city. So in Khulna city though they have the, uh, the Suarez master plan now, but the most of the people and the actual city authority also, uh, this uh, Suarez authority, this is not only Suarez, this is water and supply and Suarez authority. And the people are demanding water. And to fulfill their demand, it needs at least 5 to 10 years to fulfill only the water. Then they are telling this, now we will do this, but we believe that it, will, it must not be done within 5 years or 10 years. Okay, hello. Yeah, uh, I just want to know what was the assumption made for arriving at this large volume, I mean per capita contribution of some 45 grams per capita per day, normally is taken for suspended solutions. How do you arrive at a fecal volume or fecal stage? Oh. Oh. Uh, actually, this is from literature review. Uh, the set from, uh, for septic tank, it is 0.7 liter per capita per day. And for peat, it is 0.3 liter per capita per day. Okay, last question, then we move on. But we can, uh, I think, there are other standards that we have Yes. Yes. We are using. I think the, the idea of presenting uh, the local authority and the water sewerage authority with different options sounds very good. I just had a query that what were the parameters by which you actually compared? What were the parameters by which different options were compared? Oh, yeah, I have. Yes. Yeah, there are some parameters here, like the configuration for constructed wetland. For constructed wetland, you see there are three constructed wetland units for fecal cellars and one constructed unit for percolate one. Then for capacity wise, the first one initially, it was not designed finally, however initially it was the assumption that if we come this first option, 300 meter cube per day. Uh, that so is essentially, I think yeah. here you just looked at the cost, yeah. capex and open. Yes, uh, cost is first one is 1 crore taka, the second option was 3 crore taka and the third option was 5 crore yeah. taka. They came up with the lowest of You didn't have any environmental, unless uh, I don't recognize everything. Were no, there no. any environmental yes, impacts? Yes. And, uh, yeah, you see, you are concerned that as the, the, the land was fixed, it was landfill. So we have we had to consider the land, it is landfill side. So no disturbing for old landfill. That was the very much concern. And actually it was the dumping place of city corporation. It was not that new place, that's why we had to worry for environmental. Also, we have to worry, but that is secondary issue. Because solid waste is dumping there. 
So we designed the plant having capacity to uh, 24 meter cube with the option of fuel cell expansion. Unplanted dying bed. Unplanted dying bed will have mainly a filtering, uh, filtering facility and be covered with transparent material at the top. The wastewater will get filtered and drain out and the slurs on the top will get heated up to 55.5 degrees and yet that means thermophilic temperature. The setup will be rest same for the next 15 days to dry the slurs. One day for preparation and emptying. In total 16 days will be needed for drying. So number of beds needs to complete a cycle will be 16. Six meter cube of uh, slabs will be dumped directly in a single day. Three filter media will be used for gravel, uh, like gravel, a small stone and sand, which uh, FM more than uh, 2.5. Considering the above, uh, the uh, dimension of the uh, unplanted dime bed is 10 meter, 3 meter, 1 meter height. This is the section of the unplanted dime bed. In planted time bed, uh, all, um, almost all the technologies are same, uh, but uh, there is no uh, transparent cover here. And uh, there is a, uh, there is a uh, crest. This is the section of uh, planted time beds. Uh, there is the uh, real planted time beds which is constructed by footprint municipality and taking a rest in the direction. Cistful. Waters from unplanted dry beds and planted dry beds, both after filtration, will come and pass through the cistful. There will be a six chamber in the cistful and will be connected in a buffer mechanism. All the chamber except the first will be filled with brick beds so that energy and good bacteria can go. Total leachate quantity 18 meter cube is considered. Redemption time considered seven days and uh, 50 percent. Considering the above, uh, the dimension of the cis pool is 21.5 meter, uh, 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 12.25 meter and a height one meter. This is the section of the cis pool. This is the constructed cis pool. And last of all, the resolution part. Uh, water from cis pool will come to the maturation pond and pass through the maturation pond to the surface water body. 18 cubic meter of our waste water will come to the maturation pond from cis pool. Retention time is considered 12 days. Considering this above, uh, the uh, dimension of the maturation pond is 10 meter, 12.5 meter, and 1.7 meter height. This is the section of the maturation pond. This is the construction, constructed maturation plant. This is the total GDP of our plant. And uh, this is the most, uh, under construction plant, uh, partial W, because uh, the plant, plant area is near about 1.5 acres. So it is difficult to uh, capture, uh, total, uh, total, capture the total plant. This is the process flow diagram. Collected, uh, collected slabs are uh, divided into two beds, planted beds and unplanted beds. And after filtration, the liquid, uh, liquid parts uh, comes to the cis pool. And by the cis pool, it goes through the maturation pond. And last of all, uh, after treatment, it will be the discharge in the surface water body. Solid part from both planted and unplanted drying beds. Uh, uh, after drying, it will be reused. This is our consideration. Uh, we consider that uh, number of days in a week, one days in a week is six, and uh, the maximum capacity of uh, planted bed is 18 meter cube, and unplanted bed is six meter cube. Total 24 meter cube party. This is the operational uh, simulation. And uh, first day, at, uh, first day, uh, 
the slurs uh, is dumped in uh, unplanted bed 1 and planted bed 1, and second is the unplanted bed 2 and uh, planted bed 2. Uh, after uh, 15 days, the planted bed was uh, planted bed 1 will be the free, and, uh, and uh, another uh, free for another dumping. And the uh, unplanted bed, uh, sorry, the unplanted bed uh, will one will be free, and uh, the planted bed, in planted bed, the uh, continuous dumping is done. Planted bed, in planted bed, one year, one year dumping, and uh, rest one year, and uh, then uh, collected the slurs again. Thank you, everybody. Question. Uh, as we understand from both the presentation from Bangladesh that you guys said constructed wetland plus a constructed Mike, wetland. Mike. Plus a constructed wetland. And they have done a slush drying bed or a planted drying bed, which is also called a constructed wetland actually, and a maturation pond. So which is a more effective system? And in Bangladesh this community toilets, like the issue that we have been facing, it's much more fresh people and the old septic is quite old. So have you been mixing both of them in your treatment plant or is it a separate treatment? Suman, you want to answer this? You understood the question. Sorry, I don't understand. Please repeat the question again. So have you been mixing the septage of Community toilets and from the household septage in the this fresh and the old. Old people, are you mixing them? Yeah. We are mixing here. Yeah. I have a question. The, oh, yeah. So, why are there unplanted and planted drying beds? Because both do the same function. So, it, is the inlet sludge different in quality, and that's why one goes in planted and another goes in unplanted? Or? We uh, consider planted and unplanted both. Uh, there is a, uh, their uh, filtration mechanism is same, but the drying mechanism is different. In uh, planted bed, there is no transparency to no power. Uh, that's why uh, in planted bed, uh, for drying, uh, take more time, uh, more than one year. And the unplanted bed, uh, there is uh, slash thickness is little uh, slash thickness and and. Uh, it will cover it by a transparent sheet and uh, temperature rises in, and uh, it will take a maximum 15 days. So, right. yeah, so why not then only unplanted drying beds? Then why? Uh, because unplanted drying bed uh, requires more area. More area because uh, the slash things are. But then the area and the time consideration okay. would be. Can I, can I add? add something? Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. Actually, uh, from planted drying bed, we are not getting slurs frequently. We have to wait, say, five years, seven years, ten years like this. Because only slurs is depositing, and the assumption is point, uh, 0.1 meter, that is one, uh, 100 millimeter slurs will be done, uh, will be uh, there after one year. That is the assumption. But right now, we have to do uh, for research act, uh, purpose that we need some dry slurs for making co compost. So, for getting dry slurs, uh, we need unplanted, that is actually called unplanted drying uh, uh, wetland or drying bed. In Kurla, we are telling this, this is completely drying bed. That's why I think some confusion. Yeah. Planted drying bed is a complete treatment. Yeah. It can be used as a standalone unit. Yes. But as an unplanted drying bed, you mostly use for solid liquid separation and for drying. Okay? Uh, people use that as a standby unit, or at the same time, they digest the sludge in a previous case and then bring it here only for drying actually, and the solid liquid separation. So the area requirement actually. Uh, till certain volume, actually, the unplanted drying bed is lesser than planted drying bed. But after a certain volume, I think around more than 50 cubic meter, you can 
consider the planted drying bed area becomes less energy. In the planted drying bed, the sludge you will just dump in every uh, alternate day or something like that, depending on the resting period for the next two, three, four years. Whereas in the unplanted drying bed, you leave it only for 10 to 15 days, depending on the drying period, and then you take it out. So, planted More we could discuss together later. Uh, we'll yeah. give it to others. <laughs> yes. So, this is a question to Mr. Uh, Islam and Shuman, both of you. Uh, my question is that in both the cases we saw that you have used constructed wetlands and uh, in like, uh, I'm considering planted drying beds as also uh, constructed wetlands. In, uh, and in Bangladesh, which is a country where there is a where there are uh, frequent cases of floods almost every year. Have you considered the risks due to inundation and you know the fecal matter going into the water bodies because of the fact that the water bodies are entering your constructed wetlands? Have you considered that risk while doing that? Thinking of the okay. Uh, the uh, system is restricted, and um, what are uh, what are from uh, uh, planted and unplanted from maturation point uh, will go to the surface water body after treatment. Uh, if uh, it not treated properly, we will not uh, uh, ask uh, from the water body. My question is, what happens if when there are cases of floods, when the flooded water, the flood water yeah. comes uh, out? For our, for our Kruna treatment plan, actually we have considered this highest flood level. And my plant is above one meter of highest flood level. And also our That's plant good. is uh, above uh, HFL. Okay, you have a question. Yeah, so I wanted to uh, get some more details about this. This is a PPP based project. Yeah, yeah. Public private partnership model. Mm -hmm. Could you just elaborate a little bit about uh, what's the model like and how does the private partner recover the money? Um, the treatment plan uh, is constructed by Kurtpur municipality. Uh, they uh, lease the treatment plan. They engage a treatment plan operator by uh, contractual. And um, uh, the treatment plan operator uh, produce organic fertilizer. Uh, co-composting with uh, uh, municipal uh, solid waste of municipality and uh, they marketed uh, this product and after uh, getting uh, after uh, achieve the break even point uh, municipality will subsidy uh, give subsidy to the treatment plant operator okay any other and maybe you can give it details of any other comment, questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Lady <laughs> Vita Pushkar. By the way, all this is being streamed live, we are already getting emails from people saying they are watching some of the sessions. So, you are reaching out to the world. We don't know from where, but we had sent out some 1500 email notifications. So, a lot of this is being streamed live. They are all requesting whether they can have a copy of the presentation. So, I hope all the presenters would not mind us sharing the presentations to the one right? We'll, we'll make them PDF. We'll control it by password so that they can't copy it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, so far, the session has been on successful implementation of septage treatment options. Uh, I am sorry, I have no such uh, case to discuss with you. 
uh, I don't have or ADP in India hasn't had any experience of having a successful uh, case of implementing septage management. So what we what I am going to talk about is what uh, we at ADB are doing as far as septage management is concerned. Now, when I joined ADP um, some eight years back, I realized that most of our work is, uh, say if I'm talking about water supply, we were focusing on augmentation of water supply. But uh, of late, I think there has been a shift in the approach that we have. Uh, we are not just looking at augmentation of water supply now. We have started looking at better management of water supply. Uh, we are looking at uh, distribution network improvement. We are looking at uh, non-revenue water uh, uh, reduction in uh, non-revenue water and using the same uh, water which is available with the, with the cities for a longer uh, period of time and looking at sustainability of whatever interventions we are doing. Uh, Pune, I am told, has enough water to last till 2027 if non-revenue water is uh, looked at and controlled. Similarly, for, uh, for sewerage or sanitation, uh, we recognize that putting in large centralized sewerage system is not the answer for uh, the sanitation issues in a city, it has to be a combination of uh, sewer system and some decentralized system for peri-urban areas or areas where uh, the centralized sewer system cannot reach. And uh, somewhere around 2010, the government of India requested ADB for uh, securing a technical assistance for uh, septage management and we could mobilize a resource of around $700,000 from Japan under a Japan Fund for Poverty Reduction project which uh, we used as a technical assistance uh, in 2011-2012 uh, to do some study and find out how we can uh, bring these septage treatment and better sanitation practices in the projects that we do in the country. So with this uh, uh, Government of Japan Fund, we also got the partnership from uh, the Japan Sanitation Consortium, which were represented by uh, an agency called Japan Environmental Sanitation Center. So this TA was aim to assist the local government in establishing appropriate implementation scheme for septage management and using this TA uh, we actually selected four towns. Uh, the septage management was being planned for hilly areas. Uh, that's the case study that we took where uh, prov provision of a centralized sewer system was going to be difficult and we selected two towns in Himachal Pradesh and two towns in Mizoram, uh, Mandi and Parvano in Himachal Pradesh and Aizol and Lunglai in uh, Mizoram. And uh, consultants were engaged, engaged under this TA who prepared the city sanitation plans, they prepared the septage management plans for each of these towns and uh, they, they, uh, the TA was also used for provision for designing of a pilot implementation project in these towns and a manual for practice of septic in October 2014 that was held in Delhi. Uh, now, in this uh, entire study, uh, I'm not going to get into the details of what were the treatment options, but a lot of treatment options were looked after by or looked at by the consultants, these have been talked about in the 
uh, morning session uh, and in the afternoon session. So, while a lot of uh, options were looked at, I am going to talk about two options that have been selected for the town of Mizoram. And Mizoram is actually going to implement these two options. Whether we will be successful or not, uh, only time can tell. I'll, I can come back a year or two later to tell whether we succeeded or we failed in that. But uh, uh, these, this uh, slide shows the list of options that we looked at. And uh, we finally froze to an uh, option called Biodigester, which, uh, is, uh, which was developed by the DRDO uh, which includes anaerobic biodegradation of organic waste. Uh, so this is the option that has been chosen. Now many of these uh, pictures that I would be showing you are not actual pictures. These are not yet implemented. We are going to implement it. Uh, the bidding process is on. But uh, these pictures are from the reports that have been prepared. So, the two options that have been chosen, you know, one is a biodigester, which uh, uh, we are using in Mizoram, and uh, these pictures are from the report of uh, how uh, these would be uh, constructed and used. This biodigester has uh, been, uh, I mean, uh, it has been developed uh, using some anaerob anaerobic microbial consortium and it has been brought from Antarctica and can be used at varying temperatures. So even in very cold conditions, these uh, biodigesters are reported to be successful and that is what uh, we are using in this, uh, in this uh, town of Mizora. Uh, this town of uh, ISO. The advantages and disadvantages uh, have been dealt uh, as in the report which I am sh showing that it is eco-friendly, cost-effective, it uh, is maintenance-free. Uh, all that they do is they construct and they bring an inoculum and they feed it into the biodigester and the biodigester reduces more than 99% of the pathogens and the water can be used then for horticulture purposes. Uh, they claim it has been used in uh, very, very cold conditions, even in uh, snow clad areas. It is being used by the Indian railways in the trains and uh, I am also told that uh, Andaman and Nicobar Islands have ordered some 12,000 uh, such biodigesters for the area. Uh, some comparative uh, treatment uh, of septic tank vis a vis the biodigester and biodigester with reed bed has been shown. And what we are doing in ISOL or what we plan to do in ISOL for which the beds are out, we are having some 285 such biodigesters which would cover about 24,000 people population in the town of Kaizong which is currently under price bid evaluation and it is likely to cost 3.66 million dollars. Uh, this biodigester on an average costs about 1 million uh, to 2 million rupee uh, per biodigester. Uh, in addition to the biodigester, the government of uh, Mizoram has also uh, decided to go in for a process which was, uh, uh, which is called the Jokasu process. It's uh, used in Japan and uh, the Japan Sanitation Consortium actually met uh, the government of Mizoram and they have a kind of... Uh, uh, convince them to try out uh, this Jokasu system. Uh, some pictures again for the Jokasu system which uh, is being is going to be used for the secretariat 
complex of government of Mizoram. So this would be also tried out and we would get to see the success or the failure of this in, uh, in a year's time or so. So some pictures of the Jokaso system, this again uh, is not from Mizoram, this is from, from some other place. But the Jokaso system still needs conveyance and treatment. It needs uh, uninterrupted power supply. It has a very high capital cost and the consultancy cost is a, a special consultant who has to be hired, who knows the system, who can design the system. Uh, they have to be hired and the consultancy cost is also very high. So this is what we are going to try out in Mizoram. And, uh, uh, similar things we are also trying to do in our new projects. Uh, we have processed one project in Rajasthan where Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation again has given us some uh, uh, assistance to try out uh, what kind of decentralized uh, sanitation options can be used in the towns there. So off late we have been shifting and uh, that is all that I need to tell you today. Thank you. Questions, comments? My question is about the uh, this new technology. Can you give a little bit description about it, like how it works regarding this chairman? I uh, would suggest, I don't know, I wasn't uh, too involved with the study, but uh, there are literatures which are available, which I can share. Uh, so is the city sanitation plan and the septic management plan, or the uh, code of practice that we have uh, come up with for these four towns. These literature are available on our website, and I can give you the uh, the uh, link to this literature. The Jokasu system also it's a patented thing uh, but uh, this uh, presentation that I just showed had some slides on on how it works. So they yeah, so say uh, yeah installed too in the United United States about 10 years ago. The Jokasho is an aerobic treatment plant. That's why it needs the constant electricity supply. So it has a regenerative blower which uh, and a small bubble diffuser which introduces oxygen into one of the chambers. It also has a media that is either fixed or floating. And what it does is it recirculates the effluent from the aerobic chamber through the media and then back through the uh, there's a, a pre-chamber that is uh, anoxic. So um, as the effluent goes back through the anoxic chamber, it denitrifies. So uh, the effluent that comes out is really very, very clean, uh, better than 10 milligrams per liter and about 10 milligrams per liter of uh, nitrogen, I believe. Um, but you know, it, it does require a high level of maintenance. It seems a very strange choice to me uh, if you wanted to find a technology that would be replicable throughout UPF. Uh, I mean, Mizoram. Oh, wherever. <laughs> it seems uh, like a strange choice, but you know, as long as the money is not coming from ADB or Bill and Melinda Gates, then uh, that's probably okay. <laughs> okay, quick question here. These installations uh, are they happening at outdoor level? And if so, then like, uh, is, is it totally funded, or does the outdoor level also have to share some cost of the installation and the uh, See, the biodigesters that we are planning is 285 of them. Uh, these are of different capacities. So you can see there is a 
a biodigester for 10 households or 20 households or 30 or 50 households. Uh, for ISO, uh, the initial funding for putting up this uh, biodigester is coming up under the loan that uh, the government has taken from ADP. However, for connection, the individual households will have to pay the connection charges uh, for getting connection to these biodigesters. So these are like group uh, yeah, 10 households. Okay, uh, AK, yeah. quick. So, so the, the number of uh, reports are coming about biodigester, positive and negative. Most of the cases, negative reports are coming up. Oh, and uh, because you are being live streamed. So. Assume that you are a city official from India, whatever city, state you want to consider, but small town, less than 100,000. Of all that you have heard since morning, Dev and Dorai and everybody else, if you are a city official, city manager in this part of the country, we call them chief officer, what would you consider? as your option. What are the factors you will consider and what is it that you would like to consider? 
next 10 to 15 minutes just this one question based on what you have heard. Does it answer the question? Do you have more questions? What is it that? Those who are not at any table, please join a table. Prashant, Ani tumi ite ya? Kutetari pasan. Those who are not at any table, please join a table. If you are only three, you can continue or you can join a bigger table. The question very simply is, uh, you are a city official, you have to decide on a technology. From what you have heard today, what will you do? And what are the unanswered questions? Discuss amongst yourself on your table. Okay.